So you're listening here to, uh, to John Kaczynski. And I'm going to be talking about today anti-aging herbs, foods, and supplements. Aging is a normal part of life. As, as we get to be a certain age, we all know. And changes occur. And the uh, what happens is that... Uh, our body starts to change as we get older, and although aging is normal and natural, there's a lot of factors that create either ungraceful aging or premature aging. And graceful aging, most people would agree, is where we want to be. Uh, in our youth culture, everybody wants to be young, um, and, but we can't be actually young our whole life but we can be healthy our life. And that's with the study of longevity had a couple of different factors. In fact, longevity uh, means actually the meaning of longevity is the word macrobiotic. And this was coined by Hippocrates and a version of the Greek a word was made into English as macrobiotics. And Hippocrates used this to describe a group of people who were long lived and healthy by following the laws of nature. And his teaching of health, the beginning of modern medicine was based on these longevity principles. And in other cultures, the study of longevity has been central in traditional cultures, particularly in Asia. Ayurveda means the science of long life. And the, and the basis of Chinese and Asian medicine is something called Yang Shen Dao. So Yang Shen Dao means the way of long life or the way of longevity. And that's the ancient macrobiotic thinking. Today, of course, there's new science of longevity. And my method and my full spectrum macrobiotic approach has been always to combine, to guide with this overall perspective of balance, which was an energetic perspective of life. So when looking at the new science, I also utilize a, a method of looking at it from the new scientific discoveries on longevity, looking at it from the view of balance and an energetic understanding of how these new things affect us. And the so we can use both modern and traditional. Uh, the ancient traditional um, understanding was based on understanding something which can't really be measured, but can be felt, which in China they call qi. And qi can be translated as the motivating force, uh, which creates health and healing and creates vitality in the body. And this is something, a modern equivalent may have something like metabolism for energy in the body, but um, it is also something like a, a metaphor that is a real metaphor about vitality in the body, which can be useful. So in the ancient longevity teachings, which I use in my IDX diagnosis, uh, a method where I combine the ancient Asian teachings of diagnosis with modern biology, the constitution and condition is the key to understanding longevity and creating health. The constitution is something like the genetics that we're born with. And these genetics that we are born with, the genetics that we are born with, we have a certain storehouse of energy that we're born with. Some people are born with a huge storehouse of energy. And some people are born with um, less storehouse of energy. And then the rest of our lives, through our daily living, uh, influenced by what we eat, how we talk, how we think, our amount of thinking, our activities, our lifestyle, we unravel the energy, the original constitutional energy or strength of our body that we're born with. And if we do this more quickly, then basically we age prematurely and can have also premature death. We do this more slowly and, in fact, know how to enhance or preserve or, you might say, store energy in our body, then we have good health and can even increase our vitality beyond with what we were uh, born with. This, um, this is also based on an understanding of energetics, which they called yin and yang, the balance of opposite. Uh, 
problem for overall health. And this understanding is basically yin is something like the energy that's releasing in our body. And yang is the energy that we store. We always have a balance between the energy we put out. So these are factors that basically we have to uh, take into account from the traditional view. We're going to start talking about the traditional view because in Asia they studied longevity uh, quite a bit. And the loss of internal energy, which they called in ancient China Jing, uh, sin- signifies uh, both illness and the and a lack of longevity or premature death. So traditional methods to enhance the body, we don't lose energy prematurely and we enhance what we, the energy we get uh, from our um, daily life is diet, herbs, breathing, exercise, lifestyle, and something that we might not think about all the time, but virtue and merit. The idea that if we do good things and we act virtuous then basically what will happen is that we will enhance um, we will enhance our our life and enhance our longevity also. So I'm going to talk about each of these uh, and I'm going to explain uh, these from both a modern view. The modern view of understanding the body is the materialistic substances of what we're made of. And the traditional view Uh, used particularly in Asia, but also in old Europe and by Hippocrates was an energetic view. And although we can't measure exactly the energetic view, these are closely related to each other and we can use an understanding. So in diet, the traditional uh, way of enhancing longevity was balancing foods that release energy, or we say the yin foods, and foods that gather energy. And in the balance of things, we need foods that, more important is foods that release energy and give energy. So that would be things like carbohydrates, starches, with moderate amounts of sugars. Sugars being foods such as natural sweeteners. Um, In the past, they didn't have refined sugars. Um, And also things like fruit, uh, which would release energy more quickly Uh, So we have to be moderate with them. And then things like starches in the forms of whole grains and vegetables and beans that release more slowly. So the foods, the balance of these, we need much more foods that release like starches, grains, less sugars. And we need various amounts of foods that build the body. So some of these include vegetable foods like root vegetables and sea vegetables and also natural animal foods. Natural animal foods are, go from very strongly building to mildly building. And uh, some people need more stronger building foods, such as a very concentrated food like natural red meats. And some people require less of that and more mildly building animal foods like fish. And what happens with food, this is cost balanced by other foods like seasonings and what I call full spectrum macrobiotic approach, which you can learn about by looking at my website. Uh, for those who don't know about it. Anything that's missing puts the body in a stress mode. And when the body's in a stress mode, we start to lose internal energy, which traditionally they called kidney energy or jing, which in the modern view is the adrenal glands. On top of that, there are foods, there are practices in food that enhance our longevity and also build uh, our internal energy, so help our longevity. Um, We need to eat enough food uh, as we get older, our ability to digest food doesn't uh, decreases. Um, they talk about this in Asian medicine as something in China they call yang ming, a certain aspect of the strength of your adrenal glands or kidney energy, which influences digestion, the fire of digestion. So we need to eat enough food, but we can't overeat, especially richer foods like concentrated foods, like refined foods, because we can't burn them off. We need enough food uh, from grains and vegetables and beans and natural animal foods if you eat those, as well as mild sweets, fruits, and things like that. Um, The idea that eating as little as possible creates longevity was created by a man named Roy Walford, but this has been found not to be true. And I, uh, ironically, Ray Walford only lived to be in his 60s, so not great longevity. When he wrote a book called The 120-Year-Old 
diet, which was supposed to be focused on eating very little food, or much less food will enhance your longevity, but if you do that, it just puts the body in a high stress. There are certain foods that build internal energy. So besides not leaving out any major nutrients like carbohydrates, proteins, various healthy natural fats, anywhere from coconut oil to olive oil to butter, if you eat those, uh, it's important and natural, some natural sugars in your diet um, and understanding and learning about balance and how to balance these foods for your different needs. There are certain foods that are considered internal energy foods that promote longevity. And some of these can be eaten in small amounts and some in greater amounts. So these, they call these foods the jing or internal energy foods. These include things like butter, uh, fish, eggs, fish eggs, um, natural eggs from chickens or other animals, organ meats. Some of these are very rich, so small amounts will enhance jing. Uh, we don't need large amounts. Things like oats, uh, black rice are also part of this, and also things like bee pollen and royal jelly are considered special uh, jing foods. So food, you know, eating the right amount of food, not too much food, uh, not overeating usually, which is related more to eating natural, too many fats or uh, too much sugars, uh, minimizing or keeping away from raw fine foods and a lot of modern foods which have toxicity in them like chemicals and additives and commercial meats that have hormones. Uh, it's best to either minimize or avoid these foods for health and longevity. Herbs was also a traditional way that people enhance longevity and some of the common herbs that are known for longevity or tonic herbs. There are three classes of herbs in ancient China, and where one was known as inferior, which is like strong medicines to save a life, um, inferior herbs, uh, middle herbs, which are used to um, adjust the body, but they're safer, and then tonic herbs, which are more like foods, and the tonic herbs were known to help longevity, although the other ones are beneficial too. So herbs that are in the tonic herb category enhance Longevity, and many of these are called adaptogens because what they do is they help your body adapt. If your blood sugar is too high, they lower it. If your blood sugar is too low, it raises it. If your blood pressure is too high, it lowers it. If it's too low, it raises it. So these include things like ginseng, ginseng heisho wu, um, astragalus, cassandra, goji, which has become popular, and uh, Many uh, the Indian herbs like ashwagandha, cordyceps, uh, dong shen, eleuthero, just to mention, because I didn't mention this before, if this tape comes out in a decent manner or is recorded decently, we're going to have this available on our website for download so you'll be able to study more about these things if you can't uh, make notes or find it's difficult to do. Uh, gynostema and curcumin which is basically an extract of turmeric, are also known as longevity herbs. And these herbs are used in a few different ways. Um, so they're used, for instance, sometimes as a single herb, just in general that anybody can use. So one of the examples of these herbs is something called gynostema, which is an adaptogenic herb from southern China. And it was a qi-enhancing herb, so basically, it enhances the energy in your body. That's what chi is, the motivating force. It also helps your body. Um, it also helps enhance the body in many ways, including the mind. Uh, it helps basically, it's been found to be beneficial for uh, preventing senility, uh, to reducing oxygen deficiencies in general, to improve your oxygen, strengthen the mind improve your sexual function. So there are many single herbs that you can learn about. Um, one of the very, very good book on this is Chinese Tonic Herbs by Ron T. Gordon. And then herbs were also used uh, for the organs. And this is something I do in my health counseling that if I diagnose that there's an imbalance in an organ, I might recommend an herb to help health or longevity uh, for by using my IDX diagnosis by facial signs and symptoms and by pressure points, you can diagnose an organ imbalance. So for instance, if the lungs 
uh, are affected. A person might have sinus problems or problems with the nose, or they might uh, have problems with their voice, um, or uh, and any of these areas, and they might need a, a lung tonic to help them. So this could be um, things like the reishi mushroom, uh, ginseng, astragalus, the gynostemma we just talked about, asparagus root are some examples of something. And, and sometimes, basically, a formula is given uh, after a certain age to enhance longevity. For instance, uh, the main organ that is affected with aging is called kidney energy from Asian and Chinese medicine. And the kidney energy is more or less related to our adrenal glands, but it's much more. It's the adrenal glands plus it's probably the whole, these glands called the endocrine system, and it's known as some kind of internal energy or strength in the body related to your constitution. And they call this the, the yin and the yang jing in the body. And there are basically, if uh, so if I look at a person and they have present symptoms, something, something like, like having uh, the body and mind are depleted or weak and dull, or if uh, the body is degenerating or aging, uh, they might need a formula that basically, um, formula that would enhance the yang and yin jing. And one of the tonic uh, formulas for doing this is basically called Romania 8 combination. So it has a broad range of op op applications, including regulating blood sugar levels, control of diabetes, used in Asia to regulate blood pressure, uh, and also helps the body. Uh, some people with weak digestion may need energy tonics to go along with this tonic if they can't, because it has some things in it that are harder to digest. So there are many herbs that are used uh, for anti-aging. And uh, then basically, in addition to, uh, in addition to these things, um, besides herbs and diet, there are many other factors that will be used to enhance the health of a person in my full spectrum macrobiotic approach that we use traditionally, uh, such as balancing lifestyle. So the, uh, the traditional teaching of Asia, which I think is still profoundly helpful for today, is that we want to control how we use our energy to have health and longevity. So if we use up energy too much and we can't replace it through our food, our exercise, or our sleep, then basically the body starts to fail and starts to malfunction, putting stress on the body, causing aging. So that in life, there are many factors in lifestyle, um, basically moderation in lifestyle to preserve our health and prevent problems. Uh, Regularity and lifestyle. Um, in our environment, we have things like getting rid of toxin, toxic, uh, toxic substances in our body, which puts stress on the body. Breathing is traditionally uh, enhancing uh, the body and uh, giving more energy, such as qigong or nagong breathing practices. Meditation uh, helps to preserve energy by calming the mind so that you basically don't use up energy excessively getting upset in the daily life and also um, balancing factors such as uh, having a balanced family life, um, balance for having relationships, having social supports. These are all common things that enhance the longevity. So these are some of the traditional methods which include herbs and food that we could use to enhance longevity. And then basically there are many modern theories of of aging um, that we can use, utilize to help us for longevity. So modern uh, theories of aging include things like uh, wear and tear. So the idea of the body, uh, scientific theory of wear and tear, is that the body, um, by, oh, by just daily life, we can break down the body and uh, we can alter the body and it can, tissues can be damaged. So simple way to deal with this is basically to, as, a, as I said, don't do stupid things. Um, so things like excessive drinking of alcohol, uh, chemicals or environment, um, 
being exposed to things like vaccinations and pesticides and drugs and pharmaceuticals, uh, doing dangerous sports, smoking, taking drugs, all these things basically damage the body because of the excessive use of them. Doing the wrong kind of exercise, uh, doing the exercise when you're 60 that people do when they're 20 is not the same. So although this idea of doing really vigorous exercise is good for everybody, really there's a balance. So wear and tear can be uh, addressed by being moderate in your lifestyle and activities. Altered protein is another theory of aging that over time, the collagen production and the cells, collagen is the, the links between all the tissue starts to break down. And how we can um, help the collagen in the body is by taking certain substances and nutrients that preserve and build collagen. These include things like vitamin C as a supplement, uh, lysine and zinc, and gelatin powder made from healthy animals, like grass-fed animals. These things will rebuild the collagen in the body so that basically these will rebuild the collagen in the body so that we have enough, we can rebuild uh, when the proteins will get less altered. Free radical theory is that over time, uh, certain substances will damage the body and basically cause your, uh, your molecules to start to lose electrons. And in the process, they get damaged and it's called free radical damage. And uh, how we can, we can balance this by certain things, but one of the main things that cause free radical damage beyond pollutants being exposed to air pollution damages the cells and cause free radical damages, which leads to aging. But also eating too many of these vegetable oils called polyunsaturated fatty acids. And these polyunsaturated fatty acids is very common in the modern diet. So keeping away from modern foods that are made with soy oil and safflower oil and, and generally avoiding these kind of natural fats, safflower oil, sunflower oil, or all the seed oils and flax oil in your diet at home and trying to minimize when you go out, being moderate with consumption of nuts and seeds, which are high in these PUFAs, because the food PUFAs get into the cells and they're easily prone to free radical damage. Antioxidants that you ingest in supplements such as vitamin C and vitamin E, CoQ10, help to balance this. Uh, metabolism, uh, is another important modern theory of aging. As we get older, the metabolism slows. And one of the ways that you can see that the metabolism is slowing is that your nails and hair start to grow at a very much lower level, lower rate. And we can speed up the metabolism by eating healthy foods, by keeping the body out of stress, be stressing the body through exercises like dental yoga, meditation, uh, breathing, being careful of having too much stress in your daily life, uh, eating the right amount of food so that you don't get stressed and making sure nothing's missing in your diet so your body doesn't get stressed also. Uh, so these are many factors. The metabolism is something I talk about in my lectures and, and other CDs that are available. Um, and then we have basically, uh, we have also something called Mitochondria decline. So the mitochondria is this uh, part of the cell that is important for the fact that the mitochondria in the cells produces the body's energy. So there are substances that you can take over time that will stop this mitochondrial decline, including CoQ10, uh, something called PQQ, um, L-carnitine, uh, fumaric acid, and various B vitamins. Some people, as they get older, need extra B vitamins in order to balance this mitochondrial decline. So these are other factors. Um, so these are modern theories. Now, there are, um, there are also various kinds of gene theories, as well as waste accumulation theories and other theories. But you can see, basically, these are the basic ideas that you can look at to understand uh, to help you. Now, there are various factors that people can help themselves for maintenance uh, besides the things we talked about before. 
Uh, one of the things I think is very helpful, as we get older, digestion slows. So after 60, uh, and even before 60 for many people, because of the stresses we're exposed to, it's good to take a high-potency multivitamin. Uh, this is very important for, I think, increasing longevity. Um, if you need to know more about these or you don't know which one is good, please email me or go to my website and email me because I know some very high-quality ones that I could recommend. Um, taking CoQ10, a few hundred milligrams a day, also is one of the anti-aging substances. Another anti-aging substance that is promising for longevity is carnosine. One of the things that happens as we get older is you have glycation of different body substances where they kind of meld together. Some of this is related to blood sugar imbalances and eating lots of refined sugar, which can create glycation. And so basically, carnosine helps to, to reverse this. And there are many other types of substances uh, that also uh, are related to anti-aging. Some of them, including some that can be gotten in the multivitamin along with your healthy foods. Um, some people have found it's very helpful to take uh, green powders. Uh, green powders, such as in moderation, such as chlorella. Um, or, uh, or some other green powders like uh, that exist. And these foods basically have, these green powders have substances in them that are helpful to repair the RNA and DNA damage in the body that occurs as we get older. Uh, there are foods that also do this, um, foods that repair uh, the DNA and RNA damage in the body include things like beans, uh, include oysters, include liver, and sardines. So these are foods that if you're able to uh, incorporate them in the body. Now for people who are uh, any, just to sum up, uh, we talked about the Asian perspective and that anything, you don't want anything left out for anti-aging uh, and benefits. In addition, uh, people who want to be vegan, uh, you could look at my website. Um, and there's an article called How to Be Safe on a Vegan Diet because anything that's missing in your diet, um, animal foods I've talked about before have certain nutrients that vegetable foods don't have and vegetable foods have certain ones that are animal food. So purely vegans have to, you know, it's important to balance those substances that are only in animal food. And the way to do that is by supplementation. Uh, people want to be vegetarian. I do include they incorporate regularly some natural dairy products um, and natural, natural eggs from naturally raised animals uh, to balance the diets of the grains, beans, and vegetables and other natural foods. For other people who are, who are open to eating natural animal foods, then it's good to eat those regularly and moderately. It depends on the person how often, how much you take of these. Usually I recommend moderate portions along with grains, beans, and other natural foods. So longevity, the practices from Asia were renowned for creating longevity. And some of these practices were done in cultures around the world that were studied as longevity cultures. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about these, I have programs available uh, for people to study at my website. Um, I have a diagnosis plus nutrition health coach training too. So, so thank you very much for attending today.